All right. So let's talk about JSON now. All right. So at present, what we did was we read something. All right. We read read something back from the website. All right. And what we read was an HTML code. Now, what usually we do is we actually work on the JavaScript object notation. We always work on JSON. All right. Whenever we have to read some data from the web service, we use make use of JSON object. So JSON, if you all know, is a JavaScript object notation, which is a data exchange format. All right, that is that is you want to send some data across, you want to send some data from web service to mobile device, from mobile device to web service. We always make use of JSON object. All right, JSON objects are the ones that are based on key value pairs. So there is a key. And there's a value associated with a key. So whenever we are reading back information, we read it back with the help of a key. The key is a string, and the value can be a number. It could be a string. It could be a boolean, or it can be a complete object. So this is this follows a proper syntax. All right, JSON follows a proper syntax. So the syntax that it follows is is that data, whatever data I have, is in the name value pairs. The data is the one that is separated by the comma. All right. Curly braces are the ones that hold the object. Remember, curly braces hold the object. Square braces hold the array of objects. Can you all see this up? One object inside the curly braces, multiple objects inside of square braces. Can everybody see this object notation here? Let me show you something. I have already something here. So I have a sample JSON that I got from BlackBerry documentation, which is a freeware. You can see that. Can everybody see the object set and the data set? Can everybody see the JSON object set that I got retrieved using the JSON BlackBerry op sample data? any person who has any doubts understanding the data exchange format can respond back on the chat window anything that you have in order to know about how the data is held back in the json objects can respond back on the chat window i hope everybody is clear with sure i'll repeat it for you rahul if you see here rahul if i talk about a json object notation what happens is the data that we have to store are stored as a name value pair all right the data is represented by or say separated with the terms of objects by the help of commas curly braces are the ones that hold the objects and the square braces are the ones that hold array of objects you can see an example all right example which holds a single object an example which holds an array of objects and you see here i have a sample json that i got from blackberry documents which holds multiple objects inside this approved operators all right and if you see here from the top to bottom there is an array of objects all right let's move ahead then so here is my main activity if you take a look at my main activity what is my main activity containing my main activity contains a static url i hope now you understand where exactly is the use of json object so what i'm going to read back from the json object are these values vehicle type vehicle color fuel and the thread type so these values i'm going to read back from the object that i get from the json here if you see i have created a error list of hash map it contains a string a string so a hash map array list which i call as json list right it is just that usha was asking me about what all are the exchange formats why we need json object krishna so i was just telling her that whenever we get some data downloaded all right from the client to from the server to the client that is where we use the json object so this is what we were talking about krishna then what we create is i create a list view object so this list view object i'm going to populate 
from the data set that I get downloaded using the JSON object set. So here I have created a progress task which extends the async task. Three parameters. Can anybody tell me what all are these three parameters here? Everyone, we have just covered the async task come some time back. I need responses from everyone. String, integer, string. URL, the progress and the result. That's correct, Krishna. So the URL that I have to pass has to be of the type string. Then if I talk about the second parameter, it is void. That is, I'm not using any integer parameter here. I'm not using this object at all. Then the third parameter is the boolean. So the boolean is not going to be the result. It's something which will notify me whether the download has got done or not. All right. So this is something that I have here. Now, I create a dialog box here. All right. Initialize this dialog box on the basis of the activity context. Right. Now, say, see what am I doing on the pre-execute. Krishna, now you'll be getting to know what am I doing in the pre-execute. I'm setting a message to the dialog box and I say, show the dialog box. All right. Any person having any doubt still here? Any person having any doubt? I'll wait for everybody to respond back. Krishna, Usha, Nathan, any doubts? I want everybody to be interactive. Come on, guys. I want every one of you to be interactive. Usha, I need a response very soon onto the chat window. If this is clear, just respond with a why. If it's not, just respond with the question that you have. All right, I'll move ahead then. If I'm not getting any responses back on the chat window, I'll move ahead. This is on post execute, which we, which we'll not talk about right now. First of all, we'll be talking about doing background. What am I doing in the doing background? Creating a JSON parser object, right? So I have created a class which is parsing the response for me. If you all see here, I've created a JSON parser class. All right, so I have created a class which will do the parsing for me. I go onto the main activity and see, I'm getting a JSON object array list from this class object dot get json from url i'm passing in the url from here and i'm getting a json array list let's see what this method is doing for me pass in the url to this method create a string builder object create a default http client http get request response status line let me tell you about this i'm checking the status line here because i want to know whether the URL or the web service is up or down. If it gives me a status code of 200, that means the status is up. Everybody got my point here? What am I doing with the help of the status line? Let me know out of the chat window. Any questions, any queries that you have here? Can we start the code reading again? Sure, I'll do that for you, Isha. Which one? From the very beginning or this one? You just tell me, which one do you want me to read up? This method object or do you want me to take you to the main activity, Usha? All right, from the method onwards, see, I have created a string builder object. Then what I have done is I have created a default HTTP client 
my HTTP client will make use of the URL that is being passed on to this method. I get the URL from this method. Create a response object by executing the get request. There, I'm checking for a status line. Status line I'm checking for because I want to know whether my web service is up or down. Just a status check onto the web service. Or, all right, whether the web service or say the host is up or down. That is what I'm doing with the help of status line code. Usha, any doubts? If you have, you can respond back onto the chat window. Let's move ahead then. Then I checked whether my status code is equal to 200. That is web, whether the web service is up. What am I doing here is I'm getting the response entity, converting it to an input stream, creating a buffered reader out of the input stream. Same method, same same everything that I did for reading the HTML content. All right, I get the reader again, reading it from line by line and appending it to a string builder. Once I have appended everything to the string builder, see what am I doing? I'm just converting the string builder to a string and creating an array of JSON objects. Very simple. Create a new JSON array and pass in the string to it, which will return you an array list of JSON objects. Any person having any doubts here? Finally, return the JSON array from here. Let me have any doubts that you have onto the chat window. Can I have responses back onto the chat window really quick? Krishna, Nathan, Rahul, Usha. Let's move to main activity then. So I got the JSON array list, all right? From this method, now what I need to do is I need to iterate through the object list of the JSON and push information onto my list view. So I say, do an iteration till the time I have objects in my JSON array list, create an object from getting the JSON object at index i, so I get the complete object, one single object, get the values, get the values from the objects, which is vehicle type, vehicle color, vehicle fuel, vehicle thread, on the basis of key name. You see here, I'm having a key name here. I'm having a key name here associated with everything. Can you just check this out? So I know this key name because I have actually agreed upon a data exchange format. So I know the key name. These are the key names that I'm making use of. I get the values in the various objects, create a hash map, all right? Then I'll be putting every single value inside the hash map. I have placed the like hash map object list with the help of key name as the value inside the index and the value as the value on the hash map. And then I'm adding this hash map single object to the JSON list of array hash map. I create a list adapter, which is going to take the JSON list as an argument list, all right? And r.layout.list item, all right? As the one that I need to show the data on. And you can see that. What am I having to show the data here is, I'm having a few text views. I'm having two text views here to show the data. In fact, I'm having four text views to show the data. The data has to be filled up with tag vehicle type, vehicle color, fuel, tag thread. So these are the key names that I'm reading the values from and these are the value. All right, so this, what am I doing? I'm replacing the integer or say the text views with the values that I have inside my array list. And finally, setting the adapter to the list view. This is all that I'm doing. 